It's time to wrap up this year's indoor season, and we're doing it in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for the Indoor Archery World Series Finals from the South Point Hotel and Casino during a spectacular Vegas shoot weekend. I'm Greg White sitting alongside Crystal Govan as we are set for our first gold medal match of the evening. It's going to be the Recurve Women shooting 18 meters at a 40 centimeter target face. We've had 16 archers qualify for elimination matches that happened earlier today. And in the Recurve Women category, taking the bronze medal earlier was Park So Min from Korea. A lot of people anticipating it might be an all Korean affair in women's recurve archery, but it's not quite the case, is it, Crystal? No, it's not. We see Spain jumping in there and saying Korea's not, not the only one. And we have a massive crowd on here at the Freefort Arena, arena number one. And so this is under the lights in Vegas at night with the pressure of the crowd. It is spectacular. So as the crowd anticipates our athletes to come on out in the field to play, the two archers that we're going to see in recurve women's are number one qualifier and our number 10 qualifier. One from Korea and one from Spain. I believe we are set to bring our archers out. And here they come. On the right part of your screen is Im Duna from Korea and Ilia Canales from Spain. And Crystal Govan on the world on target archery one. scene. Representing the Republic we know of that Imduna not ranked. So it's great to see and Imduna here. And Canales, number, number 32 ranked in Spain. world archery competition. Big smiles from our archers. Talk about the pressure the they're under right now, under the lights in front of this huge crowd. Yeah, for the Korean, it's nothing new. They are used to pressure. Everything they do is under pressure. But for Spain, we'll see how she does. All right, tell us about uh, the distance to target face and how we're going to score this match. All right, so these archers are going to be shooting 18 meters, which is roughly 20 yards. They're shooting at a 40 centimeter triangle face target. So we see three separate targets. They put one arrow in each of those target faces. And the scoring on recurve is set scoring, which means two points for a win for the three arrow total, one point for a tie, and zero if you lose the set. First to six wins the match. First to six. And it's going to be Imduna who sets us off. There's a 20 second shot clock for each arrow. Ten. Great shot. That's also good to understand that her sight is set for this lighting. Ten. And just like that, you can see that Ilya grabbed a click on her sight. And one thing with recurve that can be a little tough in this Ten. setting is seeing your string, which is important for alignment under these big lights. Ten. And they're both coming out firing seem to have any nerves whatsoever. 10, 10, 10, perfect score. Perfect score. For Imduna. Oh, 10, 10, 10. And just like that. that perfect so perfect score, so 30 points apiece for these archers, which means they're gonna split one set point each. And like you said, Crystal, first archer to six wins. But what happens if we go 5-5? Shoot off, my favorite. <laughs> and we'll talk about that if we get to that in this Indoor Archery World Series final gold medal match for women's recurve. 
Replay, let's take a look at what you're seeing, Crystal. So it's a close-up of her plunger and the arrow. We can't see the clicker on the other side, but super clean release there. And of course, during the course of the evening, we're going to see different diameter arrows because that arrow is pretty much the smallest arrow that we see in competition, but there are arrows that are, the rules allow larger arrows, correct? Correct, yes. Both of these archers are going to be shooting what's typically deemed an outdoor arrow on um, for the compounders, but you see a lot of recurvers going to shoot these skinny arrows. And a lot of that has to do with the cycle we're in as it relates to the Olympics, I would imagine. This is a qualification year for a lot of Olymp for Olympians. Ten. Another ten. Nine. Just outside left into the nine ring. There's a groan from the crowd. <laughs> and you can see that Ilya <laughs> responding. Yeah, some of these Ten. aren't, aren't going to be used to that. If you shoot in other countries, this is pretty typical to what you're going to experience. Nine. Another big yell, actually, from the crowd. Oh, 10, 10, 10. Perfect Another score. perfect score. For this shot. It needs to be taken. Nine. And now, it's a little nine oh, out left, so let's talk about when when is it appropriate to start grabbing clicks, right? Because it might be you, might be the site. My theory is you move it. If you're in in a metal match, you just want to score points. You don't care if it's you, if you're struggling with something, you move that site. Well, here in Las Vegas, Nevada, set scoring system in women's recurve. Team Duna is up three sets to one. So that was a great close-up of her arrow going through the clicker there. What's the clicker? The clicker is that little piece you see that the arrow's tucked underneath, and that's essentially to tell the archer their draw length is consistent every time. When the clicker goes around the arrow, that's when they release. Critical, because with recurve archery, the more you pull back, the more pounds you're pulling back. So if you're pulling back at different distances, the arrow's gonna land in different spots, correct? Exactly, it's not like compound where we have a solid wall that you're stuck at a set distance. Three sets to one. The Spaniard, Canales, starts us off. Needing to put the pressure on with a 10. Ten. Now another click on the site, but it caught the bottom. Crystal will explain that's how that scores in a moment. Ooh, see that one went just outside. It does, yes. So all you have to do is touch that line to get the higher scoring arrow. Otherwise, Ten. it's the lower scoring arrow. Elia. More pressure. Ten. No question about that 10. No, nope, but both of those are a little low and right. There it is, 10-10-10, perfect score. Okay, so a 10-10-10 for Canales. Ten. Okay, so a 10. So right, now so we're going to have to see what a judge has to say because we have a nine asterisk on the score, which means that from our vantage point, it looks like a judge is really going to have to get up close and make the call. So either we're going to go tied at 3-3 or we're going to go to a 4-1 situation or 4-2 situation. Looks kind of out to me. Yeah. I don't think you can call that in from here. We're going to tie the situation. Or is it look at that bow hand and crystal as we look at the korean archer i mean korea is just known for a system that just 
is so consistent. Now, each archer has different timing of it, but the release all looks identical. Yeah, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's textbook form that you see out of the Koreans. So we're all tied up, three set points apiece. The first to six wins. If we go 5-5, five, five, we're going to a shoot-off. But back to the line. 18 meters downrange to the 40 centimeter target face. A three spot. We call it in archery. And after losing that end, it is Induna who leads us off. Ten. Not only is that a 10, that's an X. the 10 line. 10. So we've been shooting this triangle Ten. target all weekend, but typically in world archery, you would see a vertical three spot, which would be the three spots on top of one another. So this is a little bit different format than what most of the Ten. international shooters are going to be used to shooting. This is the gold medal match that we want to see, especially for the Indoor Archery World Series finals. Oh, 10, 10, 10, perfect score. Nine. Oh, the pressure Ooh. shot there, arrow number three on target number two as M gets inches closer to the finish line so into a gold medal out here. It looks like that 10-10-10 ten, 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 by M. Duna is going to get it. And Crystal, just doing some quick research. It has been, World Archery has changed the indoor now. Everybody shoots the three spots. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Show some appreciation for Spain's very own Ilya Canales. And that's all it takes in this gold medal match is just a little bit of a bobble. And there is that typical Korean release. Imduna actually shredding right now. You can see the difference in those releases the too. For, for the Spaniard, she just kind of gives a little bit there, but not the full. All right, so now the situation is five set points to three. It's the first to six or more. So if Imduna wins this one, it would be seven three. However, this is an opportunity for Canales to come back and tie this thing up and take it to Crystal Gobbin's favorite. But she's got to win this set because a tie here will give the win to the Korean. Nine. Ooh, and that might be the way that Induna has been shooting. Nine. Okay. As the crowd just, <laughs> the crowd is just behind <laughs> us, they're into it. Exactly what she needed. Beautiful X. Ten. Like you said, Crystal, I mean, there has to be a 10 here for any chance mm -hmm. to move forward. Nine. Oh. This for the gold medal. So nine or better. Ten. And she and gets a 10, over, and, and it's going to be a 7-3 win and a gold medal for Im Duna from Korea over Elia Canales. What a great match that was. I don't think the 7-3 really reflects what a great match that was. No, that was, that was really solid shooting on both sides. Officially, we wait for the word as the judges are down at the targets confirming what we can see. But of course, the archers know what happened. And it's official now. The call has been made. And it is M. Duna who takes gold and is the Indoor Archery World Series final women's recurve champion. The intensity there of the very first matchup. That also means that Ilya Canales from Spain will be your silver medalist. And Park Somin, bronze medal, will stand on the podium with them later on. Quite a match to kick us off. Archers came out under the lights, all smiles, and I'm sure a lot of nerves. 
but it was all about that shot execution. Getting that arrow through the clicker and getting it 18 meters downrange and trying to find that middle. Very few points dropped in that match by Imduna. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after a short break, we will and that continue with netted her a gold medal. For the recurve men, featuring the Republic of Korea's Kim Diljong up against the Netherlands' Steve Feiler. And archery fans, please remember to stick around after tonight's matches and medal ceremonies for a chance to... All right, so we have another match coming up, our second of four from the Indoor Archery World Series Finals here at the South Point Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wrapping up the indoor season, I'm Greg White sitting alongside Crystal Govan, who for a long while was ranked number two in compound, and then back in 2016, you started chasing your recurve dreams for the Olympics and was very successful here in the United States. Now we find you back in compound, don't we? <laughs> yes, you do. And how's it going? Hmm, let's see, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember how to shoot a compound again, that's for sure. It's it's funny how recurve and compound are very two very different dis disciplines for sure. Yeah, just in the way you execute everything. And so after all that work, to get back to compound. I know that it's gonna take a little bit of work, but you'll be right back up to where you were just a couple of years ago. Great crowd on hand, as we have over 3,900 shooters that register to shoot the Vegas shoot, which of course here at the Indoor Archery World Series Finals is nestled right in the middle of a three-day weekend. And Saturday night, this is a big one. And here at the South Point Hotel and Casino, right, our feed gets streamed to rooms and TVs all over the place. And we are getting ready for our second match of the evening, which will be Recurve Men, where we had our number nine qualifier in that final 16, and the number 11 qualifier. So a little bit shocking in Recurve, but it also shows how it works with the set point system. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And, now, and here come the athletes to the field of play. The the it's Kim Hill Junch versus Steve Weiler. And of course, Steve Weiler, very popular and well-known, ranked 13th in the world. And Crystal, for Steve Weiler, he's had 106 world archery matches in his career, and he's won 69% of them. Those aren't bad odds. Yeah, those aren't bad. Kim Jong. So Kim Pil Jong has had a great tournament and so far. Shooting on target number As for two, Steve Weiler, not typically see him Steve in the 11th seed coming into this, but there's a lot to how many archers participated in some of the other rounds, and Strassen and Taipei yeah, and Dean as well. As our, this is our fourth is round in our finals for yeah, the Indoor Archery World Series. A lot has to do with if you can only make one or two events, you could win, but you may be a lower seed because you didn't make it to all four events. Well, there it is, the 22-year-old archer from the Republic of Korea will get us underway on target number one. For a gold medal in the recurve men category, the first time. Kim Bill Jones, of course, running, representing Hyundai Steel, which has turned out some incredible Olympians. Of course, archery, one of the most popular sports in Korea, recognized throughout the world, as some of the top athletes in archery. Ten starts off with a ten, just a little bit lower than where he wanted it. Ten. Way to match it for Steve Weiler from the Netherlands. Nine. So we saw a little bobble on that right before he released the shot. Nerves, you think? Hard to say. Could have just been his pin was moving around and he tried to Ten. correct. Could be some nerves, you never know. Nine. 
None. Ten, ten, ten. Perfect ten, ten, ten so for Steve Byler. Let's talk about that 10 9 9. Let's talk about how we score this match and why that's not it's not the end of the world right now. No, it's not in recurve. We do set scoring. So two points to win a three euro set. One point if you tie and zero if you lose and it's first to six. So we're just at two nothing. So plenty plenty of time to make up ground. It doesn't really matter what your arrow values are. You're looking at Steve Eiler, incredible the way those arrows are hitting. I mean, if you look at the impact, the left and right's nearly identical. The up down was only a couple of millimeters. So Eiler is dialed in. And this is Kim. Oh, we do recall when he exploded onto the international scene back in Shanghai. You'll see a much more passive release out of the Korean than you typically would see, whereas Steve, you see more a much more aggressive release out of him. So two set points to zero, first to six wins. Steve Weiler from the Netherlands leads the way. He will shoot second. Ten. Ten apiece. Ten. Much quicker shot that time from him, you notice, and right in the middle it was an X. Perhaps the pacing, his pacing, normal. We'll see over these next couple shots. Ten. There's a 20 second shot clock. Once the arrow impacts the target, 20 seconds starts for the competitor. Filer was down to four seconds. Oh, 10, 10, 10, perfect score. I can see it, Crystal. So in that particular instance, Kim had nine seconds remaining, so the shot process is a lot quicker. See that. I think oh, you don't have to know anything about recurve archery to know where that was headed. <laughs> yeah, we call that uh, English, giving it English. <laughs> well, why does that happen? I mean, it looked like he was holding completely steady, but why does something like that actually happen? You know, the bow moves, your arm moves, and uh, you think you can correct it even though the arrow is long gone. Long <laughs> gone, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is definitely something that if, if you go to any, even if a local archery tournament, you'll see people doing that on the regular, especially on the amateur, the amateur ranks. And also some medals to his name, for example, in Rosario 2017 at the World Archery Youth As we take a look at Steve Weiler's shooting style. <laughs> Always with a great smile, great personality is Weiler. You know, what's interesting, though, about Kim now on the quicker release, you don't see as, as much the dramatic follow through as we normally see with a lot of Korean archers. Correct. Recurve archers specifically. All right, so two set points apiece. Kim will lead us off. Ten. You saw that one. The typical release. Ten. What's so interesting about Steve Eiler is that when he is in his rhythm and he gets that arrow through the clicker, it's almost automatic. Ten. He got lucky there. A little bit of a collapse on that. You saw he's, it almost looked like he was going to let down the shot and realized you can't do that in the finals. Ten. 
Well, I should say you can, but you, <laughs> there's not much time. You're going to, yeah. <laughs> With 20 seconds, it is difficult. Ooh, that's a 10 9 liner. Nine We're going to have to take a look at that one. The judges will have a look. This could be an opportunity for Viler to go up two set points. Ten. Dead center for Steve Viler. Dead center. I don't think you could tell that. That was a great shot. I don't I don't think you could tell that on his face. I don't think you see like his hold was a lot longer. It's like he couldn't get the arrow through the clicker. You saw the, the riser actually move a little bit the top end, like he was canting a little bit, having trouble with it. Yeah, because when you're shooting recurve and you're pulling through it, eventually you're gonna get fatigued, even with a 20 second shot clock, I would think. Oh yeah, especially at his poundage, he's probably shooting. 50-ish pounds. 50 pounds. So unlike a compound where you have cams that assist you if you pull through 50, but you're holding weight, it's different. It builds and builds and builds with a recurve. So he's holding that 50 pounds. On his fingers. For close to 20 seconds. It looks like the call for Kim's arrow is being called out. So that would mean that Steve Viler in his quest for gold, would go up four sets and two. Nine, it's confirmed and as a nine. And you can see when the Viler Dutch let that arrow go, there was only four seconds, three seconds left on the clock. Can you go out and get the job done now? Let's find out. Kim will shoot first on target one. Again, 106 matches for Steve Viler in red and white. He can win it all. Ten. So Kim's going to need to win this set to keep the match alive. So far, so good. Much quicker shot, 12 seconds for remaining on that 20 second shot clock. Ryder goes back to full draw at 15 seconds remaining on the clock. Nine. Ooh. And the crowd ooze oh, with me. Oh, there is a pressure <laughs> shot for Steve Feiler on that third and final arrow. Finally Steve grabbing a couple of clicks. We'll confirm that nine, but that means we're going to go 4-4, four, four, be all tied up with our set point system. I think Crystal looking at Steve Viler's shot versus Kim's shot, there is a distinct difference, isn't there? Kim seems to have more of a finesse shot, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that Viler has more of kind of a power shot. Correct. What, what, what indicates that to you? Just the push and pull of the... You almost see him ripping the bow apart is what it looks like. And he holds a little bit longer, but you just see the muscles working. Versus Kim, it's just a little bit more relaxed. Um, just, it looks gentle. So confirmation that we're all tied up at 4-4 after Viler's nine was called out. So now what are, what's our situation looking like? Well, I'm hoping for a tie here so we get a shoot off. I don't know about you. So if they split the set, meaning if they tie on score, we'll be at five set points apiece, and we're going to go to a shoot-off. But three arrows to decide that fate. Either one could win it outright. With a set win, Kim shoots first. Ten. 
perfect 10 to set us off. Four so seconds left on that clock. So for Kim here, it's all about timing. We see when he shoots a faster shot, it's in the middle. Ten. Just like that. Yep. He doesn't need that perfect release. He needs his timing. It's clear that that's, that's his focus. Ten. Okay, 10-10 ten, ten apiece. <laughs> Kim right here. Put the pressure on Byler with a 10. 10, 10, Got 10, it. 10. Wow, what a quick shot. So now it's either we're going to a tiebreaker or Kim wins gold. Ten, ten, Got it. Ten. Perfect score. Perfect score across the board, tied on set points. That means we're five set points apiece. Shoot off. Shoot off. <laughs> what does that mean? Means they're each going to shoot one arrow, and it's the closest arrow to the center wins this match. For gold. In recurve men indoor archery world series finals here in Las Vegas the 2023 edition. And this is exactly the way you want it. The number nine seed going up against the number 11 seed for gold. We have shot all the arrows in regulation. Now there's gonna be fresh target faces hung on the target bale. 18 meters downrange from where these archers stand. Single arrow shoot off closest to the center. Wins it all. At and trust me, the way these two shooters have been shooting, it wouldn't surprise me if they had to break out the calipers to measure it in tenths of millimeters. And it looks like Kim is going to lead us off. It all comes down to this, the moment of truth. Okay, this for gold, the Inter Archery World Series Finals. Seconds on the clock. Timing is everything for Kim. Ten. Now, huge window of opportunity open for Violet. Anything inside out in the 10 ring, he's got it. Ten. Oh, and there it is. <laughs> Outstanding Five shot ten. inside out Close X. For Steve Weiler and gold for Indoor Archery World Series Finals. And Vegas loves it. From the Netherlands, the 26-year-old will hang gold around his neck tonight. How you like that, Crystal? That was beautiful. That's what you love to see in a shoot-off. Especially here in the arena, when you know, you hear the PA announcer say what the score is, you hear the crowd, the ooze in the eye. So there is no way to avoid knowing what just happened. No, and that's why shoot-offs are awesome. You see two types of people. You have those that thrive under that pressure and drill the X, and those that, you know, just come out and shoot their average shot. So congratulations to Steve Feiler on his gold medal. Tim Pil Jong will take silver. And Nicholas Demore, your bronze medal match. Well, they came out ready to fight each other. The crowd pleased to see two incredible archers who fought their way through the elimination matches to get to this gold medal match. And these two fought hard all the way down to the end. There were some incredible arrows and a couple disappointments along the way. But when it came down to it, it was all tied up for gold. It brought us to our first shoot off of the tournament. And it came down to this archer, Steve Weiler, who shot that arrow 
inside out in the X ring to take gold. Into our Archery World Series Finals continues to bring the action. Steve, congratulations. Uh, you are the second time a champion. How do you feel? I feel amazing. Um, my shooting wasn't that good tonight. I, I really struggled a lot, um, but I'm really happy that I pushed through and eventually won it again and again with a shoot off. How, what were your thoughts during that shoot off arrow? To be honest, not that much. Um, I've been doing some longer shots that were hitting good, so I just kept on my fate and uh, tried to do my best, and it was hitting exactly where I wanted to. How does this make you feel in your confidence for the upcoming season? Yes, of course I feel confident, um, but it's mostly because of this whole indoor season. This whole indoor season has been rolling. Uh, I'm really happy to finish it off this way. Thank you very much and congratulations. It's time for our next match in the Indoor Archery World Series Finals here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for Compound Women, and it's our number five seed against our number six seed. So from Great Britain is Ella Gibson going up against Italy's Elisa Rohner. We've seen some outstanding shooting from these two competitors. This weekend here at the Vegas Shoot 2023, and yesterday, Elisa Rohner who's on the left part of your screen. After shooting a perfect oh, 300 sorry, score, shot something called a 10K a day shoot off. There were 84 Ella archers, Gibson. and she was able to whittle it down to one arrow and win $10,000. But of course, here's Ella Gibson, and our newly ranked number one in the world in women's two. compound archery. Through 55 Italy. matches in her and world Lisa archery career, she wins 75% of the time. As for Elisa Rohner, 50 matches, she wins 64% of the time, and she's ranked 15th in the world. So 22-year-old Gibson going up, with 20, going up against the 21-year-old Elisa Rohner. All right, I'm Greg White sitting with Crystal Gavin as we get ready for compound archery. Crystal, tell us, what are we doing? Distance, target face, all the good stuff we need to know. So just like the recurve, we're gonna see we're shooting 18 meters away, tw roughly 20 yards. But what we're going to see different is the target faces. So the 10 ring is now going to be much smaller, about the size of a dime, versus what we saw on the recurve, that bigger 10 ring. So the size of a US dime. And we're every also doing total score versus set system. All right, so cumulative scoring. So every arrow makes a difference in terms of your total towards the end. 15 arrows to be shot at a time total possible score is 150 points ten. World number one leads us off and that's a 10. so even though we have the larger ring on the outside it scores as a nine so it's just that little ring in the middle ten. so these archers also if they were shooting bigger arrows during the Vegas style tournament, which does allow up to 27 size arrows. They did have to switch tonight for World Archery Rules yeah. limits to 23 size diameter arrows. So I know Ella was shooting 27s. She switched down to her 23s for tonight. Yeah.
10, 10, 10, a perfect score. So I think for Gibson, it's that middle arrow is a little low, and that's going to be a call. I think that's a nine because it'd be oh, Vegas 10, 10, 10, but we're not shooting. We're shooting and World Archery rules here at Indoor Archery World Series Finals. Oh, a perfect way to get us underway with some high-quality shooting on so both We will have a look. Judges play. will have a look. 10-10-10 for Gibson, 10-10-10 for Roder. And so it looks like that one is going to be out. Ella Gibson, currently 22 years of age, world number yeah, one. So it should be one-point advantage for, for Rohner. And looking at Elisa Rohner of Italy, 21 years of age, currently ranked world Once number we get those 15, scores, we'll let you know. A good look at Ella Gibson. Yeah, she <laughs> wasn't a fan of that shot, was she, Crystal? No, not at all. The gold medal at four different World Cup events. And, of course, a silver medalist at the World Cup final. So scores are in, 29 points for Gibson and 30 for Rohner, which means that Gibson will lead us off, the archer trailing. He's the one who starts us off. There'll be a 10 second clock to get to the line and get set, and then a 20 second shot clock. You can see that flashing red on Gibson's side. Elisa Rohner today during the Vegas shoot, shooting a 299. Just dropping one single point on her last arrow of her ninth end and was not happy. I was shooting on her bail actually when that happened. Now Ella was the opposite, shot the 299 yesterday and the 300 today. Another one that's kind of Ten. low. She needs to catch that inner line from the smallest circle to get that 10 points. Ten. No question about that shot. Nine. I don't think she caught that either. Yeah, that was definitely out nine. Nine. All right, so for Elisa, giving the point back to Gibson. Ten. Quite a bit of movement on that front stabilizer, but she managed to put it in the middle. Rebounding with a 10. Oh, there it is. Both so we await that official score, but it looks like 10 9 10 apiece. We're going to go to 58 total score to 59, 59 for Rohner. Archer, Rohner. Now leading the way 59 to 58. One point advantage. There is a lot of looking going on there and taking a look at the by the World Archery Judge. All it needs to do is to touch to that line. It doesn't need to break Other through the line. It just needs to United touch States the line America. to get the higher the scoring value. In the quarterfinal, she beat Rico Ariola, also of the USA, 149 to 148. Roner then defeating Tanya Galantine of Denmark. And the final score there, 147 to Mike Schlusser. Oscar helping out Ella Gibson. Ella Gibson not happy with that one. Yeah, when you're shooting a compound, if it's not a 10, you're not happy. For Lisa Rohner, she has that stone cold look on her face and did the entire match today as well. Incredible $10,000 win. Inside out arrow against three open shooters from the United States, compound open shooters, and sat them all down yesterday. All right, so 58 to 59, Gibson trails by a single point. Her third end of five. 10. Great shot. No question about that point value. Ten. 10 
Alberta Verona, maintaining a single point lead. The one thing you'll notice here, you'll see Ella closing her left <laughs> eye. You'll see some compound shooters doing that. Versus here, we have both eyes open. So you can shoot a compound both ways and be successful. Ten. Ten, ten, ten. Perfect score. Okay, now it seems like Gibson is starting to find her rhythm. Back tension release. Aid for the Italian. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And a nice ten, ten, ten. shot. Another 10, 10, 10. So even with the pressure that Gibson put on, Rohner still maintaining that one point lead. After end number three for Elisa Rohner of the nation of Italy once again. And of course, it's important to understand that, you know, I have seen people come to this tournament with three arrows because you only shoot three. You gotta make sure if you're gonna be shooting as well as these athletes are at the Indoor Archery World Series Finals, you gotta bring at least nine with you. Well, you need six. You need six minimum because you shoot them, they pull them, and then they bring them back to you. That's why you always read the rules. Always read the rules. Here at the South Point Hotel and Casino, we're shooting for gold in the Indoor Archery World Series Finals. A lot of people know Ella Gibson, world number one. But I think for fans in the United States, this is the coming out party for Elisa Arona from Italy. On the main stage here yesterday, first woman to win the 10K a day shoot off. Shoot a perfect 300. Not Good. the first. Sarah Priels, who's Sarah. in the box for Ella, has done it in the past. 10. Ten. But talking about, you know, this, her coming out party, it's, it really... That's the great thing about indoor archery on the world stage is anyone can go to any of the indoor World Cups. You don't have to make your country's team. Nine. You just sign up and you go. And so you really see it's an opportunity for shoot young shooters or up and coming shooters to really make a name for themselves. Ten. Elisa Rohner coming in at the young age of 21. I think yep. she's put five arrows in the exact same hole. It's really incredible. <laughs> ten. All right, so a 10 here is going to extend Broner's lead to two points. Nine. She dropped it. Yeah, you could see see a little bit of movement there before oh, there the shot. The she was fighting it. Definitely. So, Rohner's got 118 points out of a possible 120 to this point. Ella Gibson at 117. So it's still a single point with one final end to go. How would we end up in a shoot-off in compound archery, Crystal? So if the archers tie in total score, so in this case, if Ella scores one more point, then Canales, we will go to a shoot-off. Good look at the release of Elisa Rohner. After her big win last night, $10,000, she said that it wouldn't have settled in. And I'm sure at this point, in second night in front of the crowd, and you can see her cracking a smile, she understands the magnitude and the gravity of what's going on. So because, Crystal, of what you said, these archers were kind of shooting in the same spot, World Archery has decided that they're going to change the target faces, make sure it's easy for the judges to make those calls. So brand new target faces are hung. Yeah, you never want a match decided by a missing line. You really want to have those lines there and be able to make the call. Ella Gibson will shoot first. Ella Gibson will shoot first, being the archer who's down one point to Elisa Roner. 
our final three arrows of competition. Gibson just needs tens. There's no other option for her right now. Ten. Perfect start for this final end. A couple arrows away from deciding gold. You can tell with Elisa Rohner that off the shot, once it releases, her intent of that bow towards the target a lot of times tells us where it's landing. Exactly. So that was another really long hold there by Ella. You can hear just a couple seconds, maybe one or two, horn went off. But the question is, is that a nine or a 10? It has a nine asterisk. Judges call. Nine. That's definitely a nine, however. So that could be the difference. So we're either one point difference still, or. We're tied. We're tied. 10. We need a 10 here to guarantee at least a tie. Got it. Nine or ten. Well, there you have it. Looks like a ten to me. But we'll see. So now it's in the hands of the judges. So we have two arrows that are nine asterisks on our board. And those are arrows that are going to be looked at a lot closer. But even if there's no asterisk, it's still not definitive. Down range yeah, so the judges are going to be looking at Ella's arrow to see if there's any yellow between that line and her arrow. So it looked like he pointed down and counted that one down. So it looks like Gibson's is counted as a nine. So if Rohner's one of her arrows, the one that's asterisk is counted as a 10, we have a clear winner. Oh, have and it is, it's official. Elisa Rohner. Indoor Archery World Series gold medalist takes down the world number one, Ella Gibson. What a weekend this archer is having so far. Two paydays in a row. Amazing. So the 21-year-old from Italy will stand on the top of the podium with a gold medal around her neck to add to her pool of prizes already collected here at the Vegas Shoot 2023 as Indoor Archery World Series champion. Ella Gibson, silver medalist. And our bronze medal went to Tanya Gelantine, who defeated Linda Ochoa Anderson early. So these athletes came out onto the field of play to the adoration of the crowd. And then it got down to a 15 arrow shoot and just a couple of bobbles here and there for the oh, world right. number one, Ella Gibson. And it was Elisa Rohner who was able to capitalize by a point. And gold medal it is for the Italian on her best trip to the United States. Great shooting and congratulations to our gold medalists. More archery coming. Congratulations, Elisa. It's been a wonderful competition for you. Yesterday you won the 10K, and today you are the champion of the Indoor World Series. How do you feel? Uh, I feel really great, also because in the past competition, I used to shoot 
very good, but always get away with a fifth place or something like that. So that's a good comeback for me. You needed to wait for the last goal of the arrow. What were your thoughts in that goal in for the arrow? Uh, I just, uh, I, I wasn't really watching or hearing what my opponent was shooting because I, I just wanted to uh, mind myself. And I just thought I have to shoot a 10 like all of the other arrows. Like I wanted to shoot strong in the back. What are your expectations for the upcoming season, outdoor season? Uh, I hope to shoot my personal best. Uh, that's always a goal for me. And uh, I don't really know what to expect, honestly. Thank you very much and congratulations. At the Indoor Archery World Series Finals in Las Vegas, the 2023 edition at the South Point Hotel and Casino. I'm Greg White with Crystal Dobbin as we get ready to introduce our final match and our final competitors to the field of play for the compound men's. It's our number one qualifier versus our number three qualifier. And coming out is Kyle Douglas versus Bodie Turner. So Kyle Douglas at 25 years old and Bodie Turner still Still at 15 years old, his final day as a 15-year-old. He will turn 16 years old tomorrow, Crystal. And Bodie Turner has showed us so much, as has Kyle Douglas. This is a match of heavy hitters. Yeah, we're talking the last two years' Vegas winners here. Just incredible. So for Kyle Douglas, he had a big change this year in the offseason, switching to Bowtech. And he's been working really and hard to figure that pull out. Crystal, we know the different manufacturers. You can't make it all shoot the same, so you as the archer has to figure it out. Yeah, and it can take a lot of time, but he came out firing on all cylinders, it seems to be. So for Bodie Turner, he has burst onto the scene. He started Vegas 2022 as a 14-year-old. He turned 15 on that Saturday and then won Vegas and a whole pile of money to go with it. <laughs> and now we see Bodie two days left in his 15 year, his 15th year, and today his final. So tomorrow, this is he going to celebrate his birthday with a gold medal around his neck? Or will our number 47th ranked archer in the world, Kyle Douglas, snatch that away? And like you're saying, the last three Vegas championships This is the representation. Tell us about the field of play, Crystal. What are we doing? So just like we saw in the last match, we're 18 meters away, those targets, and we're only scoring that inner 10 ring that's about the size of a dime. Each archer is going to shoot three arrows each end, and it's total score this time, cumulative scoring. So the highest score wins. None. First arrow from Bodie Turner drops it low, possibly a little nerves. Ten. Oof, wow. that's a beauty. <laughs> what a great release from Kyle Douglas, too. You saw that bow just jump forward. It's exactly the way he tunes it. Nine or ten. See another one a little left and a little low. And coming out here, compound, you have your scope, you have your peep. Depending on what you're running, ten. it can be very dark down here in the arena. All right, so for Bodie Turner, he did grab a click or two on his sight, moving it left to try to get it back to the middle. Ten, ten, ten. No problem for Kyle Douglas. So we're going to have to take a look. This could be two-point oh, advantage for Douglas right out of the box. The indoor world 
So for Bodie Turner, he has a little bit of experience in world archery, coming in as the 118th ranked archer. Bodie tends to stay here in the States and just shoot more as he starts to expand his archery resume. And both these archers you see with world rankings, you wouldn't have seen that last year because indoor did not count in previous years towards world rankings, only outdoor did. So it's great to see that change. Field archery and indoor now counts. And by the way, there is your bronze medal winner, Chris Schaaf, on the right part of your screen. Paige Pierce also working. So it looks like Schaaf is working for Bodie Some Turner and Paige now. Pierce helping out her Botech teammate Kyle Douglas. What do you see on that shot with Bodie? I just look at the the ease of that release and how still that bow is on the release of the shot. Yeah that's a beautiful shot there by Kyle. So it turns out that Bodie caught a 10. So it's 30 to Douglas, 29 for Turner. Turner will lead us off as the trailing archer, 20 second shot clock. 10. Caught the top of that inner ring. Now he'll make a side adjustment. Ten. Wow. Right now, for Kyle Douglas, it looks fluid. It looks easy. Effortless. Mm -hmm. There's the middle for Turner. Ten. It's a little bit of a punch there. <laughs> a little bit of a, yeah, for sure. Ten, ten, ten. Perfect score. So a perfect score for Bodie Turner as he figures out his Hoyt Invicta, getting it dialed in. Nine or ten, Ooh. too close to call. That one's pretty At close. Starts to drift it out a little right in the last two. It looks like Tate Morgan in the coach's box. Yep. For Kyle Douglas. And for Bodie Turner, it's his dad. Joel Turner with shot IQ. So, Bodie Turner, without question, he's got 30 points. The question is Kyle Douglas. If it's counted as a nine, we're 59 points apiece and we're all tied up after two ends. I think I heard him say that it's, yes. it's confirmed as a nine. Yep. All right, so we're all tied up. Out of 60 possible points, each archer has shot and scored 59. So we go into our third of five ends. If you're new to archery, there's a set number of arrows that are shot at a time. In this particular case, it's three. Once those are shot, shooting stops, they're scored. That is called an end in archery. So when we refer to that, now you know. Each archer with 20 seconds to shoot their shot. 15 year old Bodie Turner. 10. And he's starting to get that look in his face. When he gets into a rhythm, this archer is hard to beat. 10. Kyle's starting to get away from the middle a little bit. So we're seeing two opposite trends. None. Oof. Yeah, so in the first end, we saw Kyle very relaxed on that trigger with his thumb. Now we see a little bit of space and then get a little closer, closer. Nine. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we're seeing some nines. He needs to just take a deep breath right now, recollect himself. Ten. So a ten for Turner. Ten. Yeah. And see, that was the shot that we saw the first three. Oh, there it is. Nice Both and relaxed. Okay, so we're going toe to toe here. Still tied up. Ten, nine, ten for each archer. We're going to go to eighty-eight points after our third end. We still have two to go. If 
if the score is all tied up, we're going to go to a one arrow closest to the center shoot off. It could definitely go like that. Well, two nines were shot in the last one. Let's take a look at Bodie Turner and his nine. Crystal, what do you see? So you just saw the bobble right at the end there. I think it's pretty obvious what happened. Kyle, look, look at that at thumb. That thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In archery, that's called a punch. And Kyle will tell you, he is a puncher. He's not, he doesn't shy away from it. And we have a few top archers in the world right now that are punchers and it works for you. Of course, people that are committed to the hinge release or the surprise shot, as you, if you will, often will tell you, oh, the punch only lasts a while. However, Kyle Douglas has been on a roll for year after year now and his shot, when it's timed perfect, and when he gets it centered, and when he gets his thumb on that barrel, Kyle Douglas has one of the greatest shots, shot executions that we've seen. Yeah, the key for him is that timing and just being relaxed through the shot. Turner starts us off. Ten. A good 10. Ten. Yep. Ten. Again, you see him clicking his sight. Both of those were high. Gives it a couple clicks. You'll see a, a lot of sight adjustments in compound. Ten. Timing. That was a beauty. Yes. <laughs> Another inside out. Ten, 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 perfect score. I don't know. <laughs> Nine or what did we see there? What did you just see him do? We saw him go to punch it. That is Not punch it, <laughs> and then punch it. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't quite there, and we thought he had it for a moment. The other thing I saw, too, was and there is air that moves around here. Did you notice that just before the shot, he blinked? Yep. We see it with recurve archers. We don't see it as much with compound, do we? No, no. If you watched the exhibition match earlier, you saw Catalina just blinking, 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 whereas these compound shooters, you just see the eyes staring at that target, staring it down. And it's... So it's definitely out. So Kyle Douglas now is going to be one point down. So 117 to 118, which means we have one end of competition to go. Here's Kyle's nine. Yeah. He knew it on the release and looks up. There is a jumbotron above these archers, by the way, and they're far enough back where they can look up and see when the camera's showing their target and they see what's going on. All right, less than three hours left in Bodie Turner's 15 year old year. However, you're going to say that. Can he close this out? Indoor Archery World Series final gold medal. Compound then. Ten. Back to his shot. Ten. Yeah. <laughs> we all felt that one. No, nope. uh, and he knew it. Yeah, he launched that one. I think his thumb was in Arizona. How many 15-year-olds could say they're going for this kind of money? And a 10, ten. for Bodie Turner. He just really has to hit gold. Ten, ten, ten. Does it with a ten. So Bodie Turner 
wins gold at the Indoor Archery World Series Finals, celebrating with his dad and a handshake from Kyle Douglas. And wow, after a rocky start, a little shaky for Bodie Turner, he really settled into it and took a convincing win, 148 to 146. And what a way to sign off his 15th year as he's going to celebrate his 16-year-old birthday tomorrow. Incredible stuff from the young Bodie Turner. People would often say he's the future of U.S. compound archery, but the future is here. What's going through his head right now? Pretty incredible. He can't, he can't celebrate too much tonight, though, because he has another 300 to shoot tomorrow. He certainly does, with $57,000 on the line and trying to repeat is Bodie Turner. So these two athletes came out into the Preferred Arena, ready for battle. Uh, 150 points on the line, 15 arrows shooting at 18 meters downrange. It was up and down. It started a little rocky for Bodie Turner as things were picture perfect for Kyle Douglas. And then a couple got away from him. And it was this young man after that one Looked like for a moment that it might have been in the nine, but it caught the 10. And it was clear sailing to the end with a perfect 30. So it's Bodie Turner who will stand on top of the podium as Indoor Archery World Series champion. Bodhi, congratulations. Um, this was like a great way to celebrate your birthday tomorrow. What does, how does it sound? Sounds great. I was super happy with how I shot. I just picked these arrows up from Lico. I had like six arrows through them before we started the eliminations. I shot really good with them through the eliminations, so it was great to be able to do that. So you are the Vegas champion, and now you are the Indoor World Series champion. How does that feel? It's it's an awesome feeling. I've like I've watched this for a long time. It was cool to get to compete in it. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to this year, and it was really awesome to be able to do it. Uh, tomorrow, the last day of competition of the Vegas shoot. How does this competition is going to end? Um, I'm super confident going into tomorrow, so I, I think it should be good, and I'm, I'm excited to see if I can get to the shoot-off tomorrow. Thank you very much, and congratulations. And lastly tonight, of course, we would like to invite you and encourage you all to stay in your seats after the medal ceremonies, because we have a special arena-wide giveaway. So don't head for the exits early, or you might Well, Crystal Govin, that was an amazing evening of months. archery as we saw some incredible, incredible archery. What do you think? Give me a summation of what you saw. I, th I think it was just excellent shooting all around. We saw shot timing, how important that is. We saw how coming out and having your sight dialed right from the start of the match, how important that can be and just making adjustments as you went through the match. We saw, you know, archers adjusting their sight and making corrections and coming out on top. We also saw archers from four different countries win gold medals, Korea, Netherlands, Italy, and the USA. We started off with a great exhibition match and then we rolled into our women's recurve, then the men's recurve, and onto our compound men's and women categories. and. For these archers to perform under the lights in the Preferred Arena and in front of this very knowledgeable and energetic crowd was incredible. So the sights and sounds of the South Point Hotel and Casino continue to entertain us as the Indoor Archery World Series Finals have come to an end. For everyone here who brought you this coverage, I'm Greg White for Crystal Govin. We'll see you next time.